You didn't see General Sherman. I seen him, she said. Mm. <laughs> Going down to burn up Atlanta. <laughs> Everything in sight. Meanest man God ever created. Mm -hmm. Don't know why he burned up the city. <laughs> I wish I could create her language. It was the beauty, the beauty of black speech was in her language. Now, there are three women that I have worshipped and thought they could do no wrong. My Mary, my own mother, and my fifth grade teacher, Evelina Taylor <laughs> in Columbus, Georgia. This was one of the women in my life that not only that I have worshipped for their beauty, their grace, and the things they have imparted in me as a person, but I think my character and my attitude toward the female gender is shaped by those three women. By those three women. Tell me what your father looked like and what your mother looked like. My mother was beautifully African and you you will see this in blacks in the south my mother was dark skinned with uh, long hair and we would sometimes we had no electricity in those days of course and we would take the light out of the room the lamp and we would uh, the children would take mother's hair apart and comb it just to see if there was electricity in the hair you know we had no electricity in the house we say all the electricity we've got we had no lighting had no and so there was one man up the street that was the preacher he had electricity you know he was the only person in the house and we would say we've got electricity we, mother's got electricity and yeah, so we would comb yeah. her hair and he'd see, and, the, and see the sparkles <laughs> and that was the only electricity we had and, and that was great fun for her, you know. What did your father look like? He was brown skin. We, we call him Biscuit Brown. Biscuit Town. <laughs> mm -hmm. Was Bis he heavy set, slender, no, tall, no, was, short? No, he was uh, medium, medium how, medium. So the girls in my family, my sisters tend to be brown skin and the boys tend to be black, you know. Mm -hmm. But there was never any. How many? There was nine all told. What were your parents like? Uh, were they uh, church-going people? Were they disciplinarians? Were they strict? Very much church-going. And my father was a great disciplinarian, but beneath it all the softy. <laughs> What did, what did they insist on? Good manners and... Uh, Good manners and respect for elders and respect for parents, the kind of respect that I think would be good today, that an adult gets respect because it's an adult whether it's your parents or not. And you grew up in a community where any adult can discipline any child, whether it's that parent's child or not. Mm -hmm. And you live with some respect for adults. When you see an adult coming, you begin to behave any adult. My mother was a washerwoman and I, I went to, always went to pick up the clothes. Because she came late to the town, she didn't get any of the bundles of the rich white people, so she had to uh, wash the clothes of the, of the poor. And so, this is hard to remember now, but this is true. She would wash the clothes of a whole white family one dollar a week, wash and iron, pick up and deliver for one family, one dollar a week. I turned you on to reading. How did that process happen? Strangely, the Bible. The Bible? Yes. Looking for my people in the Bible, I could not believe that we were absent from God's book. In, in the Sunday school lessons, all the Sunday school lessons, I saw the angels were white, 
Every image was white. And I did not know at that time that the Sunday school lessons were printed by a, a white Baptist printing company in Nashville, Tennessee. And I began to ask, where were, where were we in the Bible? I did not know that the Bible story, that the Christian story is basically an African story. I did not know that. If the story is unfolding in Africa, and there are no African people in the story. I see Moses, and Moses was an African. Going down to marry Zipporah, an Ethiopian woman. Zipporah gets white. Moses gets white. It's not, what is this? Where are the Africans? I found no Africans in Africa. See people going to the land of Punt, which is present-day Somali. They're black now. How did they get white? I began to have a feeling for something which I would investigate thoroughly later on, and that is the control of people by image. Mm -hmm. Did you have a sense, though, that... Um you had not originated in this country in which you were born. Did that, was that transmitted to you by your elders? No, my elders really just suspected, but they didn't know. Mm -hmm. I would get this in my teens. My father married again two years after my mother died. And because of my deep love for my natural mother, I was going to dislike my stepmother. Had she been a good stepmother, I was going to dislike her anyway. But she set it up perfectly. She wasn't a good stepmother. So I naturally did not particularly like her. And, so and then she made life rather miserable for me. And at the age of 14, I left home. During this time, looking for the image of myself and working for whites who had good libraries they rarely ever used. And sometimes when I borrowed books, they rarely ever missed them. And so I stopped bringing them back. <laughs> so I grew up with, so now I begin to accumulate a library. <laughs> and blacks could not use the public library in Columbus, Georgia. And so I began to forge the name of white people on notes. Go into the public library and said, give this boy, you know, a certain book as though I'm picking up a book for a white person. And so I would pick up the books for a white person and didn't bring them back. While working in, in Georgia, and I asked a, a white person, I still remember his name, Gag Steider. He was a lawyer. I asked him for some books on African people in ancient history. He said, I'm sorry, John, and, and we say in the speech of our day, he let me down slow. He was kind. So I'm sorry, John, I, you, you came from a people that have no history. He said, but don't you worry that if you persevere and obey and behave yourself and you might make history. Your people might make history one of these days. And, and you personally might be a great Negro like Booker T. Washington. That was the greatest thing a white person can prophesy for a black person when I was growing up. I didn't know much about Booker T. Washington then. Twenty years would pass before I would even investigate. 
I was buying the concept that he was uh, compromising an Uncle Tom, which was a poor concept and it was surely an inaccurate concept. That's a very un.